Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Letterboxd Book Club. I am Mackenzie. And I'm Claire. And today we will be talking about the fourth house of my book, Untamed. Uh, I'd also like to put in a little bit of a uh, PSA that there are 12 books in the House of Night series which we have discussed. So we will re- be releasing four, then a standalone one-shot book, and then the next four, another standalone, and then the next four. Yeah, just to break it up a little bit because it can be a little bit overwhelming to just smash out a whole series, even though they are relatively small books. Like, it's still a lot. Yeah, it can be hard to slog through them all. I will do us the honour of reading the blurb. Of course. I've got you. You're not alone. I tried to sound calm and soothing, but I was breaking apart inside. Please don't take him. Please save him, my mind screamed. As if it's not enough to lose her friends and all three boyfriends, Zoe Redbird, the most powerful fledgling the vampire world has ever seen, knows that great trouble is coming to the House of Night. Despite her nightmares, Zoe finds herself distracted by the new kid, Stark, brought to the house by Nefret, who clearly has something she wants from him. There's something between Stark and Zoe that she never imagined, but disaster is awaiting them all and she doesn't know if she can fight the approaching evil alone anymore. Would you like to kick us off with your thoughts, feelings and emotions, Claire? Yeah, I kind of enjoyed it. It was a bit of a, uh, I guess, I don't want to say slog, but um, not all, a lot happens, but not a lot happens, as we keep saying. A lot of action more towards the end, which is fine. Yeah. But I did surprisingly find this book a little bit more suspenseful, as majority of this book is centered around, you know, a vision from Aphrodite in regards to Zoe's imminent death. There are a lot of moments where, even though everyone's, you know, rallied around to protect her there are moments where she does like kind of wander off on her own and there are a lot of moments where i'm like oh no what's gonna happen to her because she can't be alone so that was quite surprising and i had a bit of a jump scare movement with her like a raven mocker as they're kind of introduced a bit later um so wasn't expecting that but didn't expect to get that sort of feeling from a book like this but that was great i enjoyed it i can't wait to now that the action is and the plot is furthering a lot more, um, I'm very excited to see where it goes and how this gets resolved if they save the world, but we'll see. Yeah. What about you, Kenzie? Your thoughts? So, my thoughts, feelings, and emotions are, um, I'll say this a lot throughout the series, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself always. Uh, as a teenager, I love this series. As an adult, I'm looking back and seeing a lot of red flags. Um, I dislike that only now has the action sort of started like uh book one two and three were all i guess uh world building filler and introduce and introduction until now the action started and i think that book four is way too late to introduce all this stuff like Mm. from um other series that we've read by other authors you know it's kind of the same big bad sort of introduced and then um uh, throughout the series it's the same person or uh, book one they world build and introduce things and then from book two it picks up whereas this one yeah it's book one two three and then yeah just at the end of four really is where it really kicks off and this one is a bit of a bigger book and it's the only one in the whole series that is a bit of a bigger book so I don't understand why say book one and two couldn't have been combined and then book three and four, even one, two, and three could have been combined. Yeah. Especially, uh, I know that we've spoken about this, but with the timeline of the books, that, yeah, each book is a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, or, like, less than a month. And, like, that can that timeline can be stretched, you know, within one book, the progression of time. Um, but, yeah, it's very interesting. Yes. And, yeah, about the big bad, like, at this point, we all thought it was Nefra, and we thought that she was going to play a major part, like, especially later on. And she still might, but yeah. it sucks that, like, her evilness is being kind of pushed aside now for this big bad that she, you know, unlocked. But, um, because, yeah, it was always, we always thought there was going to be more of a standoff between Nefra and Zoe, and Nefra hasn't really been seen to kill or destroy Zoe in any sort of way so far. And I find that just a a tad annoying. But now that we've got this bigger bad to deal with. And I still would have enjoyed it if, yeah, Nefret had been the big bad. And she had just, uh, I don't know, like, dabbled in some eviler sort of source of magics. Um, And then became, like, the evil version of herself. I don't know why she had to unleash something else or, like, unlock something else to then only just be a queen. 
Mm, so now her yeah evilness is being pushed aside for something a, for someone a bit a, a lot more worse. Which eh, like, I mean I'm sh like of course yeah. they they'll be working together and she will be like an acolyte to them like yeah a piece in their chess game now. But yeah I I feel like the whole Nefret v Zoe especially isn't kind of like not resolved but there hasn't been a serious consequence to that yet. Yeah, but I suppose it's kind of hard if Nefret's like the pre the high priestess and she can't just go around. She can't show that something is wrong with her or anything. She can't lose her temper or temperament, which it, uh, it we know it does happen in this book mm. though. So the cracks are showing. But yeah, there hasn't been much of a confrontation between the two of them. It's always been sneaky. Yeah. Um. So I'd, I'd be pretty worried if. They don't have a final standoff. Very a la like Voldemort, Harry Potter ish almost. Yeah. But like not quite. But like Nefret hasn't done anything that like severely bad yet. Yeah. Other than unlocking wise, this big bad. And I, I always I mean I understand it for uh, a book series and themes and uh, tropes and stuff. It's always an older person going after the sixteen year old who has been chosen <laughs> and has the power, and it, they want to destroy them because they're going to be usurped. Rather than, oh, this new, like, supernatural being is super powerful. Let's combine to, like, bring good into the world. Yeah. I suppose there always has to be the balance between good and evil. For every, like, evil uh, entity, there has to be, like, the hero or the light or the good in order to keep the balance. Yeah. So I suppose, yeah, it's like that. And, like, so is the chosen one, of course. She, she's gonna succeed. She yeah. will succeed. It's going to take a bloody, like, what, eight more books? Yeah, eight more books for her to potentially succeed. But but looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Yes. Let's get into the book itself. Uh, it starts off, uh, Zoe is on her way to see her friends because she needs for them to be her friends again because at the moment they're not because she uh, had sex with her professor, then he died, and which broke the bond uh, with her and Heath. And then Eric walked in on her having sex with her professor, so she lost all three of her boyfriends. Yep, rip. <laughs> <laughs> so as she's right. walking through the courtyard, uh, she is surrounded by darkness. Um, it feels icky, it feels wrong, and then she is scratched by an unseen being. Yes, unknown entity. I actually quite liked this as an introduction because it's like a as an layer of mystery it's like ooh, like what's going on now i thought it was um kind of nefret kind of yeah digging her claws into zoe early on but obviously we learned not quite but i think thematically as well i really enjoyed the uh stark haha <laughs> contrast <laughs> between this and the other books where the other books feel like oh it's a teen ya and this mm -hmm. one is like there's stakes <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes. And yeah, remember, it's 2007, 2008, 2009, kind of onwards, these books were released. And yeah, stakes are higher. Yes. I really hope we get significant character deaths in the future. <laughs> the only thing that I, not the only thing that I dislike about this book, but one of the things that I dislike about this book, however, is that it introduces these um, creatures called raven mockers. Um, and I think... Book four is way too late to be introducing new supernatural beings because, right, yep. as we've said in the past, I really enjoy books that have the supernatural law and beings already kind of existing in modern world, and it's just a given. Like this is just how the world is, and yep. that's cool. People know vampires exist, and there are celebrity vampires, etc. Yeah, exactly, and they all know the rules. There's all different houses of night across the. Uh, world but yeah to now be in book four and be like oh also there's these creatures like i don't understand how hard it could have been to be because they wrote about classes in book one and two they could have had a history class and then saying oh and then there were raven mockers and they haven't been seen since blah 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 like just put a little bit of a sprinkling of something so that when they come back to it in this book we're like oh we know about them because yeah they're trying to blend the the mythology the the yeah native american mythology again i don't know if it's accurate or true um into this but like how am i going to explain this ready existed like yeah thousands of years prior and surely there were like scriptures about it or writings or artwork like about these creatures but really none until now I've... yeah and i know that grandma redbird does a bit of an exposition dump um in this book but hang on 
Um, but I think, yeah, as we were talking earlier, um, you were saying as well that you tried to research person in this book and then against the Cherokee legends and you can't really find anything apart from within this book. Yeah. So it's like not only have you created all new creatures, but now you've created all new legends. And I wonder where, uh, or if there's like that creates a sticky situation being like, oh, I've created this story about this legend and I've placed it into a Native American history. Mm. Uh like uh, what sort of situation that creates <laughs> yeah for sure but yeah i just think it's too late to be introducing new things <laughs> but then how would the, the story kind of like progress would you have preferred still like a nephrit v like zoe i just yeah nephrit v zoe zoe or even nephrit can bring back something but i i just don't think that yeah if, if it said the nephrit v whatever v zoe mm. uh could they have not introduce these creatures earlier through exposition yeah. somehow right so that it made more sense rather than being like okay we're going to introduce this new character and these new creatures and this new thing and then also like why did it have to be cherokee legend could it not oh, just yep, have been yep, yep. like a supernatural legend yeah i know now that i think about it because i know we're going to talk this is going to be a little bit out of order for us but with the whole legend of Kelowna and the atrocities that he committed <clears throat> and if it was like a legend like because it was significant the way like he ran the world and everyone was like hiding underground especially women and stuff i feel like that would be significant knowledge to have known about been known about and been taught as well you know it's in this society i guess and yeah. i think that kind of follows up to what yeah you were saying with the whole like the law or being learnt in like a history type of class because like it's his reasoning and his motivation is absolutely fucking atrocious and yeah, yeah i feel like it would have been known prior because then yeah towards the end of the book you know obviously yeah nefret unlocks Kelowna, and it leaves this sort of like rupture world ending event almost and it's like Surely people would have had an inkling about it, other than, like, yeah, Cherokee heritage. But I suppose it would have only happened in, like, America, so perhaps, like, the European places for House of Night and stuff probably weren't exactly aware of it, but I don't know. I feel like, yeah, the, the myth seems too significant to have not already been known about, perhaps. But, oh well. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and it, it opens up a big can of worms and for how they're going to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, and also, like, just, sorry, going back to this, because I can't get past this, because I'm pretty sure PC and Chris and Cass are just white women, and so I couldn't imagine you and I writing a book and writing, like, just making up something, like, First Nations peoples here in Australia, making up some sort of legend. Oh, yeah, for sure. Hell no, that that would be, like, racist. Or... Yeah, exactly, Um, and I've just um come across some articles. I will send you a screenshot, but now I feel different. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I feel not okay. Is it because they're white women? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so let's move on with the book. Actually, What's hang next? on. I'm just looking, I'm trying to look up, because I've actually never seen, like, pictures of these ladies, of the, these yeah. authors, so, because I don't want to be, like, <laughs> spreading, like, false info. But, yeah, if they weren't already Native American, obviously it would be problematic. But then again, this whole series, in terms of dialogue, is already problematic. Okay, anyway. Oh well, moving on. Unless you have another point to make. No, that's all. Moving on with the book. So Zoe uh, gets to the dorms and she's going to go and see her friends and she's going to be like, yo, I know that I uh, have had three boyfriends and now I have zero, but let me explain. Um, and they're interrupted by the new arrival of James Stark, an Olympian archer. Ah, uh, yes, James Stark. Interesting that now we're having kind of like an introduction of like a transfer because you know we hear across the world there are ha like obviously other houses of night so very adds an extra dynamic to having a transfer here because like why was he transferred what did he do is he like evil or something and I didn't like how he was kind of the way he talked informally to like the house of night pro professors because I think he yeah is an Olympian archer or something mm. so he had an ear of arrogance about him until Nefret uh, introduced herself and stuff and then he changed his tune real quick he also has a dog, Duchess, which is going to mess up the entire <laughs> system, society, because of all the cats. Yes, he has a dog. Wonderful. Anyway, so, uh, Zoe goes up to her room, Aphrodite and Stevie Ray are there. We find out that Stevie Ray has an aversion to sunshine. 
Yes. And Aphrodite's mark is a fake. <laughs> yes, which begs me the question, how do they get back in? Because as far because as we're aware, Nef Nefrit still yeah, has her protection wards up. But with, I think it's explained, Zo um, Stevie Ray technically isn't a human, a fledgling, or a proper vampire anymore, so she's able to sneak through. But I yeah. forget like what Aphrodite's reasons is, because yeah, she's like a human now. Yeah. Um, but Aphrodite still has visions, and she explains to Zoe that she has had a vision of the world uh, being in darkness, despair, violence, awfulness, and this is caused by Zoe's death. Um, it's caused by Zoe's death, and she sees Zoe dying two ways. One is drowning in a European near a European palace, which I think is weird. I don't think they're gonna end up in a European place, like. I will keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a very obscure location. Or and very important. Number two is Zoe being decapitated by uh, unknown darkness, which is what Zoe felt scratching her. Um, That's rough. What a way to go, decapitation. But, yeah, both versions of the vision are Zoe is dying. Zoe dies alone, which is what Nefret has set out to do to isolate her from her friends and get her alone. But I think, as we said last episode, Zoe's doing a good job of doing that all on her own. All herself, yes. But it's all um, in the name of protecting her friends. It's like, ugh, the girl yeah. can't catch a break. So Zoe goes to leave her room. She runs into uh, the twins and Damien, and they're all like, blah, 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 blah. How could you lose three boyfriends? <laughs> Zoe's like, blah, 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 blah. She fumbled the bag. <laughs> I fumbled the bag. And Aphrodite, Af Aphrodite, Aphrodite is like, listen here, you shitheads. Um... The only reason that Zoe didn't tell you things is because your minds are weak as piss and could have been infiltrated by Nefret and mine isn't. So, fuck you. I love your personification of Aphrodite right there because I feel like that, <laughs> that would have been very accurate. You're just swearing at them. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's... But a lot of the dialogue And then suddenly between... they stick in the light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of the dialogue between like the friend group towards Aphrodite is very childish. Like, they just repeat the same kind of not slurs but yeah they like, call her a hag hag from hell and it's but yeah. it's all the same negative language and it's, just, and it's, it's like, repetitive yeah. and it's annoying it's like we get it she's a bully but like this is important. And it's also i understand yeah that she's a bully and she has been awful but also maybe there's a reason that zoe's hanging out with her like yeah like obviously for a good reason but perhaps yeah. now that yeah up until this point she's been isolated like yeah, yeah aphrodite has been that person to lean on yeah so once that is explained, the friends are like, oh, holy shit, we love you again, Yeah, Zoe. they switched up real quick. <laughs> yeah, let's do a friendship circle. And once again, this book picks up, I think, a week after the last one or something, or almost maybe instantaneously. Mm, it's like within a couple of days. Yeah, so not a lot of time has passed. So they're like, let's do a friendship circle, yay. Power so, of friendship. As Zoe goes to invoke Earth with Aphrodite, um, she kind of gets zapped by Aphrodite kind of gets zapped by the candle and she's like oh no I'm out of favor with Nyx she doesn't no. trust me anymore blah 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 Nyx appears before them well Aphrodite and Zoe and I Zoe think. yeah um and she's like no bless you my child you are not out of favor with me you were just holding on to earth for Stevie Ray until she got back also you are now human because your humanity is so strong but she's a bully and she was selfish incredibly selfish and also, she hated humans. Yeah. And then also, could you imagine going through, uh, because Aphrodite's a little bit older, um, like getting Which marked- Which makes it worse, bullying yeah, fledglings when you're older. Yeah. Uh, getting marked, going to school for like four years or whatever, and then Nyx is like, lol, jokes, you're a human again. So <laughs> Yeah, you may as well just die, reject the change, <laughs> just be gone. Yeah. Ultimately, it came down to her sacrifice, or willing to sacrifice herself for- Zoe and for Stevie Ray, and that kind of balanced out all her meanness leading up. Sure. <laughs> sure, we'll leave it at that. Or, do, or is it just like a characteristic plot hole? And it's just in order to keep Aphrodite on our good side. Yeah, because why couldn't she have just gotten like a filled in mark or something like Zoe if she was extra special? Yeah, yeah, like why isn't, yeah, Aphrodite. Why is it like, no, being you're recognized? A human. It's just the, it's just words of affirmation. Nyx does support you, but no, she's not getting any actual physical reward for it. Yes. But yeah, goddamn, poor Aphrodite. But I mean, we also gotta remember she is like emotionally abused by her parents and she does not have a good relationship with them. So, I, but I suppose deep down, she's willing to, like, fight the good fight. 
and I respect that. Yeah. Uh, so after this little confrontation, there is a uh, vampire council meeting thing held. Yes. Um, when the priestess of all vampires, Shakina, um, is presiding over. What and a force. She's come to reject Nefret's declaration of war on humans. Because I never really thought, well, who's, like, in a higher power than Nefret? I didn't even think there was, like, a higher priestess that oversees yeah. everybody. But I loved that, because it shakes up the power balance between Nefret and, like, the students, and now, you know, someone's overseeing her. Mm. I liked it. Although yeah. it was kind of funny when, at the council meeting, because they, Zoe and her gang, all have the affinities to the elements, uh, she's like, why are these kids here? <laughs> It was so good. But uh, very interesting to see like what role she plays. And due to, you know, the recent deaths of the sh the teachers, they're a little bit short staffed. So Shakina is that is that it? Shanika? Shakina? Sh Shakina. Shakina is stepping in those roles, which is very awesome of her. I had a better word than awesome. <laughs> very generous of her in order to do that. But she must also wants to ultimately I think keep an eye on Nefret because that was a mighty call for war. Yes, and she also listens to Zoe and puts detective marks on the case of yes, whatever of, he was on the case of. <laughs> um, yeah, I forget. I think the, it was the just... other professor's deaths. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because yeah, she's this is where Nefret's temperament is kind of unfolding because she wasn't expecting Shakina to step waltz right in, and yeah. you know she, everything is going according to plan towards. In regards to Nefret. She's questioning Nefret. She's like, why didn't you just call the police? The human police. Yeah. It's like, I don't trust the human police, but that's the procedure. Like, she's not doing yeah. anything following any sort of protocol. And Shakina yeah. is calling her out on her shit. And I love that. Yes. Also, it just makes me think, why hasn't any of the other, like, teachers or professors, like, start turning or looking into Nefret a little bit more? Because, like, obviously... Because she's known as like a gracious because kind. Because you haven't read far enough in the book. <sighs> I know, but still, like, come on. Surely they're like, Nefret, chill the fuck out. Like, it's oh, fine. Yeah, but we she's... don't need to declare war. But like, she's being super stubborn, and surely th that's not suspicious to yeah. anyone else. But anyway, but yeah, I loved it. Shakina oh. making her way. Eric Eric comes back to the school. Oh, yeah, that's because right. Because he was away doing, I don't know, fuckboy stuff. I don't know, he was doing something. And he comes back, and now that he's a changed and, like, full-fledged vampire, he can be a professor. Because they're one professor it. short, and he is the best Shakespearean monologue person. Yeah, so he's <laughs> gonna teach drama. So he's gonna teach drama to Zoe. Also, the Sons of Erebus are still around. They're still chilling for the time being. Um, but also, Zoe, it, when Zoe and her friends all congregated, about the, the circle, they um, Zoe realized that Stevie Ray is still chilling in the tunnels with the other like red fledglings, and they need an excuse in order to go out and about into the community in order to like see her and figure stuff out. Because Shakina said that um, I don't think no one can leave without either no one's allowed to leave or no one's allowed to leave without like a Sons of Erebus kind of escort. So. Zoe comes up with an idea in order to be able to leave campus for a little bit and it's to volunteer at like a cat shelter. You've missed a lot of content, but yes. So, sorry. I, I had I feel like I had to say that. Otherwise okay, that's all good, that's all good. Okay. Um all right, sorry, reverse. <laughs> reverse back to the uh council meeting. I might just cut that whole part out anyway. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. That's next. So anyway. Um so Zoe is walking back to, I don't know, her dorms or whatever, because as you know, Zoe should always be walking alone <laughs> after she after she was attacked. This is where the thriller aspect or the suspense comes in, because like, yeah. she's alone right now, what's going to happen? Yeah. But anyway, so she meets Stark along the way, and he's like, yo, come watch me practice. Oh, she's on her way to the stables. That's yeah, right. Yeah, just talk to the horsey. Yeah, this is especially where I was like, Zoe, what the fuck are you doing? And like, one yes, of the visions yeah. had Stark in it as well, Stark's face. Yeah. And so I was like, Zoe, why are you alone with Stark willingly, you idiot? Yes. And so he reveals that like, his special affinity is that he never misses his target. I got confused with this, but anyway. The target is like, his heart, not his head. Like, like his heart's desires. Yeah, his heart's desire. Um, and so he accidentally killed his mentor because he was shooting and his mentor was better than him or whatever. And he's like, I want to be the best. So his arrow shot his mentor and killed him. 
I thought it's a pretty weird affinity. It was like a la. Oh no! Did you want? No, it's okay. Never mind. Cause like, so for <laughs> this is heart's desire, Claire. I know, but like, say if because I feel like he's gonna be a pawn of like Nefret. So like, if Nefret tells him to hypothetically kill Zoe in his heart, would he miss or would he kill her? If he's being told, he'd miss. Okay. So then, what's the point in trying to recruit him? If oh, anyway. Because Nefret doesn't know that he loves Zoe. I know. <laughs> and, and they've known each other for like two hours. And they're oh. in love. Jesus Christ, the soulmates. Anyway, so four. he confesses that like he fears his power, so he asks Zoe to use her powers to protect the others from him. They're having a great time. They're bonding. Um, they know each other and for then, two hours. Yep, yeah, and then they're I don't know doing something, about to leave, <laughs> and Stark's body starts to reject the change. I'm pretty sure they kiss. Yeah, they something. have like a weird little like make out like as he's dying. <laughs> as he's dying, and then he's like, oh, "We didn't get enough time or some shit." I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think like even before this, like they'd like make eyes or like when they met each other, like they were a bit flirty and stuff. I think. Yeah. But... And Zoe's like, "Yo, don't worry. You can come back as a red fledgling." Oh yeah, because she has to reveal all. <laughs> she, yeah. I think she reveals a lot of stuff to. No, I'm thinking of the past book. I don't know. I don't know what's going um, on anymore. And once again, we love the trope of introducing new characters just to, one, turn them into a love interest, and two, kill them off. Yeah, love that. If you think about it, like, that sort of, like, affinity is a, kind of a bit OP in a way. Like, you just, like, never miss. Or, like, or at least never miss in your heart. <laughs> um, the next part, I don't really give a shit about, but well, you can talk next, about it. What's the next part? The next part, Aphrodite, Zoe, and Darius go to Street Cats. Oh, uh, yeah, that was just a fun adventure because it's just, they had to just try to find a way in order to get off campus and sort shit out with Stevie Ray. Because, yeah, they're trying, they're doing an awesome juggling act with trying to figure everything out because they want to, they have a plan to kind of reveal the red fledglings to the, the campus and to uh, Shakina, but they just don't know how yet. So yeah, they're trying to sort that out. And Darius, I like Darius. He's kind of like I don't know. He's gonna be he's gonna be boyfriend number five. Like I don't care that him and Aphrodite flirt, but like yeah. he's boyfriend number five. And like yeah, he's just chill, and you know he's happy to escort them everywhere. But this whole scene was kind of this the like religious undertones of everything throughout this series. But like I don't know, it was a bit much I think, because um, with the. Uh, because at the shelter, they learn that it's run by Kerflu? Yes. By, um, like, Catholic nuns and stuff. And the leader of it is Sister Mary Angela. And they were very surprised to learn that they don't... Sister Mary, Mary Angela and all that don't care about the fact that they're vampires and that they believe in different things. Because yeah. to them, Nyx is just another variation of the Virgin Mary, etc, etc. Yeah. And yeah, it was just a bit of like, again, religion exposition as well, but it was very cute and sneaky of how they managed to like talk to Stevie Ray because she kind of snuck into the, uh, oh, I suppose she didn't sneak into Street Cats, but she managed to make her way there and act as if she's volunteering as well. Mm -hmm. And then Aphrodite and Darius are out and about just playing with the cats. It's fun time. Aphrodite, Aphrodite adopts a cat. Yeah, it chooses her, which is very... I didn't even know that Aphrodite didn't have a cat until this moment. I feel like it would be significant, kind of, as like yeah. a vampire not having a cat. But the cat seemingly has the personality of Aphrodite, so that's very cool. But I guess these nuns also yeah, open up the idea that, obviously... Um, Differing religions will not kind of impact their uh, how they feel towards like the vampires and stuff because all we've seen in terms of other religious figures, which is uh, Zoe's stepdad, like and their and his hatred towards like the vampires and their like wrong and all that type of stuff, that sort of discrimination. So it was nice to see the other side of the coin where there's like a religion that absolutely accepts them. Mm -hmm. But again, just religious exposition, really not my not my thing, not my forte. But we slog on through and Aphrodite's cat is named Maleficent because of course it is um and then on the way back to the house of night they have a run-in with Heath so they have a run-in with Heath on the way home because Zoe decides to stop at a restaurant um Aphrodite is with her and Darius is just chilling in the car because he minds his business like a good man we love that and I think Heath is with a girl is with it yeah with the girl I forget her name it's someone insignificant I don't care and I think I think this is more of like a 
break up from his end because you know throughout the first three books it's always Zoe trying to like you know break apart from him but this time it was like his final word which is kind of ironic but yeah he finally gets the point I guess because the 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 bond thing is broken I forget what it's called <laughs> imprint imprint that's it the imprint is broken and yet yeah. although it does we do you see the symptoms of like the effects of what happens when an imprint is broken for a human because it is said that it's incredibly painful, painful for the human yeah. not necessarily physically but more emotionally and men mentally and like no, severe kind of physically. depression and physically uh. yep yeah but anyway, so yeah, Heath tells Zoe that he's done loving her because it hurts too much. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what that's where how she drew the line, how the line has been drawn. <laughs> like she's tried to break up with him several times, but yeah, and then that's pretty much it for this this whole encounter. So now Zoe and Aphrodite and the gang have a way in order to get out of the school and be able to you know devise further plans in order for to help Stevie Ray and all that type of stuff. So smart cookies. Now, this is like the drama scene that happens next, and that was very interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, Eric is teaching, and he's like, I'm going to do this scene from Othello. And Zoe, you can be my Desdemona. So, they're like having a Shakespearean moment. Um, Intense and Shakespearean Zoe, moment. Zoe like tells, her, her, tells him her feelings still, and then she kisses him before the bell rings, but he leaves. Yeah, I mean, because it's, it's improv, and so in that way she's, yeah, kind of telling the truth while also un in the context of of Othello and Desmodina and all that. So. Desdemona. Desdemona. See, I, I took a guess at how to say it because I completely <laughs> forgot. I'm not very familiar with any of this. But yeah, so that's fun. Very awkward. I don't know. I don't know if I like Eric being back because he's being a whiny, but to be fair, he did get cheated on. Like, he, his emotions and feelings are valid. But now yes. that he's but also a professor, he's being a little bitch about it. Yeah, but now that he's a professor, there has to be a sense of professionalism and decorum in terms of how he treats his students and now Zoe. So yes. very weird line that he has to walk through as well. Then Darius is like, Zoe, you need to go and see Aphrodite. I'll take you to her and he can move really, really fast. Yeah, that's a fun little party trick he has. Zoomy zoom. Um, and so... Aphrodite's like, I'm having visions of your grandma and she's being killed or something. Blah, blah, because, blah. of course, yeah, grandma that. has to be the stake, you know, the, the carrot dangling at the stick, her inevitable death, because Zoe loves her very much. Yes, so we bring Grandma Redbird yeah. to uh, the House of Night to stay. But within all this, um, I think Zoe has to talk to Shanika. Shakina. Shakina, sorry. I need to write <laughs> this down. Shakina has to have a talk with Shakina, but she overhears a conversation between her and Nefret, in which Nefret is trying to um, undermine Zoe's character, like planting the seed that Zoe is, it's such a coincidence that Zoe has an affinity for all these powers and yet all these deaths are happening. Oh yeah. Like yeah. she's trying to pin any sort of blame and evil Yeah, Nefret's being a little her. bitch. And Shakina's just like, why are you being a bitch to a 16 year old? Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> But also, Shakina is also calling out Nefret. It's like, well, why aren't you going through the proper procedures and like yes. reporting Zoe and all this? But then Nefret's like, I'm scared. They, they conclude their conversation, but then Nefret had a little final word where it's like, oh, don't trust any favours, Zoe asks, and all that type of thing. Which leads to Zoe wanting to ask Shakina if her grandma can stay in the House of Night due to like safety reasons. So this uh, vision is not fulfilled. <laughs> But yeah, Grandma Redburn doesn't take much convincing because I think Zoe explains um, all these bad things happening. And Grandma's like, yo, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I forget how Zoe knows about like raven mockers. Did she, she must have done research or Damien. Maybe she doesn't know yet. Oh, she sent someone to do research because how does she explain it to Grandma? And then Grandma's like, I know exactly what this is. Because she just says like, oh, I've been scratched by this thing or whatever. She just explains like the circumstance. And then when okay. Grandma comes, they, right. she does the exposition dump and then they realise that there's one listening at the door. And then also because I think that they appeared as darkness and stuff to Zoe. But then once Zoe knows what they are, I think she kind of like speak them into existence it's because then like they realise. Physical manifestation yeah, as well. Yeah, they see them like yeah personified yeah okay 
and then grandma recommends that um, everyone has a little cleanse circle, so that's fun, fun bonding exercise. Um, so grandma does that for herself as well, and all is well, grandma is on the way to the House of Night. Yes, and so Aphrodite, yeah, in the vision she wrote this poem, um, and grandma oh, read Oh yeah, bird. that's right, because the poem says, like, the queen or whatever like says this yeah. oh yeah she knows because of the poem that's right I'm an and idiot. grandma redbird uh reveals that the poem is about Kelowna, a fallen angel and he will rise again through the help of the queen i can't say this see sclee sdilly anyway <laughs> um <laughs> i've watched that i'm really sorry everyone yeah look yeah queen t-s-i-s-g-i-l-l-i yeah yeah, that's so right. Yeah, I got feel some like an, things mixed up, but that's okay. I anyway. feel like I feel like an idiot now. It's like, why did Zoe know what to tell Grandma? It's because of the fucking poem. <laughs> yeah, and everyone um, tries their best to figure it out as well. Yeah, throughout all this as well, uh, Zoe bumps into Eric and has a chance to explain to him about Lauren, and I'm pretty sure he's a little bit better as well. But anyway, and he's like, okay, whatever. So he's not like mad, mad, but like, and plus he knows what's going on with Nefret as well, kind of, with uh, with Nefret too. So, like, yes. he's kind of, like, on the fence about everything because, obviously, yes. danger is looming. Yes, because he heard, like, Zoe and Nefret's little spat at the end of the last book when Zoe's just like, yo, watch out. Yeah, and, yeah, there are still more moments still where Zoe's kind of wandering off on her own and she's, like, yeah, hearing these, the flapping of the raven mockers and, like, the darkness and all that, um, mm. which is fun for her. Um, so, yeah, Grandma arrives at the House of Night. Again, yeah, gives this whole exposition exposition dump yeah i feel like even though it's like a myth or a legend i feel like it would have been widely known in in this just in this society just like yeah just like how we know about like like and don't know but like like nowhere in the ark type of thing like it's a big catastrophic event natural event i guess would you would say but like everybody knows about it i feel like that would same application into this story as well but oh well if that made sense <laughs> yes um yeah, the grandma's there, there's Raven Mocker listening at the window, they uh, blew, blow some blue dust on it, it goes away. Also, I have a qualm. Yes. Because there was a moment, I think it could even be this moment, or another moment, where Zoe asks Damien to use the wind, because I think Zoe is just so, like, frozen and shocked, and he's just able to manifest wind and blow it all away. Like, there's been no development or training with these guys, with their affinities that we've seen. Yeah. Like, I would like, because as, as you said, it's a bigger book. I'm sure there would have been a moment where, like, Zoe walks past them once they're all friends again. And, or like, even, they're practicing or twingling, playing around yeah, with like, their even, like, in the second book, you know, when after they discover they have these inf affinities or whatever, like, instead of three boyfriend drama, could there not have been some things where they, yeah, are all, they're, they're like, oh, let's go to the rec room or, like, let's stay after the circle and, like, we should try and practice, like, doing things with our powers. Yeah, because, yeah. Because we've only seen them be able to, like, use them in the circle. But even then, it's just bringing them to the circle. Like, they're not doing anything fancy. Like, they're not making tornadoes or winds. Or Shawnee's not um, making any fireballs and all that type of stuff. And, and Aaron's not making it rain. Like, we, I, want, I want that little bit of development. But I know we're never going to get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after all this or whatever, they go to sleep. Zoe is woken up by Shakina. Her grandma has been in a car crash. Mm -hmm. That she thinks, well, like she knows, has been caused by a raven mocker. Um, so her and Aphrodite rush to the hospital, and Zoe is like, "Can I have a medicine man come and sit by her so that she's protected?" And they're like, "Lol, no, that's weird." And she's like, "Well, can I have a nun?" And she's like, and they're like, "Yeah, that's fine." So yeah, sister Mary Angela takes one for the team, and she sits by Grandma Redbird's side and like not casts protection, but like speaks protection prayers and all that type of stuff. Mm. Which is very sweet because, again, like Cherokee spirituality and all that, she says it's like kind of no different almost to what she believes in. Mm. So it's great. We love that unity and non discrimination, except from the doctors who said no medicine man. <laughs> yeah. Discrimination at its finest. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they, I think grandma's in a coma, so they don't know how she's going to go. But sister uh, Mary Angelina, she's sworn to protect. Angela. Angela, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on. I'm exhausted, man. Zoe goes back to school um, because of life. And she begins a cleansing ritual at the request of Shakina. So obviously Shakina trusts Zoe and is like, Nefret, you bitch, I'm not listening to you This at is all. like a whole school event as well. 
Yeah. Um, so Zoe tries to introduce the red fledglings and Stevie Ray makes an appearance. Yes. But nothing can ever go right at the end of a book. Hell no. <laughs> so Nefret interrupts and Stark is back. Stark is a red fledgling now. Oh, yeah, because they had a plan to put a nanny to, cam in the yeah, morgue. Yeah, and to get right. his body. Oh, yeah, and now that I remember it, Jack and all that had a distraction with the dog chasing Maleficent. Oh, my God. Ooh. I think that was just after Zoe's conversation with Shakina about um, Grandma Redbird staying. Yeah. Yeah, I just, it's such a funny detail. I can't believe I forgot it until now. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so Nefra is trying to be like, Zoe made these. Zoe's the reason. Once again, like, your principal is saying that a 16-year-old is doing all this stuff. Nefret makes Stark shoot Stevie Ray. Poor Stevie Ray. She just, she's, she's alive, she's dead, she's alive, she might be severely injured. But yeah, she can't catch a break, the poor girl. Far out. And I think this, this whole thing fulfills a part of the poem that Aphrodite saw in her vision. Because it's yeah. something about yeah. Earth spilling blood. Yeah, and it's near, like, the special tree. Oh, that's, so that's why I realised when I was reading about that tree, because you said last episode, oh, the tree is important. Yeah. And here we are, because that's where um, Kelowna lays. Yes, so Stevie Ray's blood pours, Kelowna is freed. Yeah, just unlocked. Nefret uh, reveals herself as Queen T.S. I'm not going to try and say it. Taylor Swift. Um, <laughs> yeah, Taylor Swift. <laughs> and she kills Shakina with her thoughts. Yeah, like, it's just, like, that's OP magic right there. Like, yeah. just, just snaps her. And also, on. you've just killed, like, the high priestess of all vampires. Like, Yeah, like, yeah. That's but then, jail. But, and everyone kind of sees it, and then she introduces Kelowna as Erebus. Yeah, because she's trying to, yeah, like, snake it in, like, no, like... Like, I am clean, he's Erebus, he's my consort. He, he, oh no, well, no, he's the, the consort of Nyx, but, um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, Erebus is the consort of Nyx, yes. So yeah, she's so yeah, she's trying to like weave him in. But like, I uh, have another qualm. Yes. The sons of Erebus, surely in their learnings and their training, they would also have like scriptures and shrines and maybe even statues of what Erebus looks like. Surely they know. Yes, Erebus, what but Erebus I looks also like. think that maybe uh, that these people can reincarnate. Ah, right. And so, yeah, they're like, and even like Nyx, like, might be appearing to Zoe and stuff as like a way of like a Zoe is comfortable with. Like, she might not look like that. Right. 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 Because I don't know why, but I feel like there there is, I know there's like a temple and like a shrine of Nyx, but I don't know if there's like a statue of her. But like, still, like with Erebus, surely they would like know, yeah, what he looked like. So, yeah, that was my only qualm, but yeah, the whole reincarnation thing, sure. I think this is just me making things up. Yeah. Yeah, but otherwise, yeah, like, would, ha would they not know what he, what Erebus actually looks like? Because they serve for him, under yeah. him, in the name of him. But then um, Darius realises something's not right, so he uh, is helping Zoe and all that. They all run for their lives, because all hell is breaking loose. This is like a, a, like a rapture event, because, like, mm. raven mockers and spirits and all that are just, like, fucking up the world. Yeah. Everyone is to get underground. I think Zoe gives Heath a heads up to find a, a place underground An as underground, well. Underground, yeah. And she contacts Sister Mary as well to be like, get Grandma underground if you can, type of thing. Because yeah. again, the story of Kelowna, like, he <coughs> is obsessive. He's a sexual assaulter. Yeah, exactly. But like, yeah, like, women are his ultimate desire, but also the thing, the creatures he hates the most as well. Mm. Like, it's not good. Again, yeah, his whole plotline introduction and his motivation is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, no one's safe. And they're running for their lives and raven mockers are flying at them and I think they end up underground where the red fledglings are hiding. Mm. Into the, yeah, the depot tunnels. Yes. <sighs> what an end to a book. <laughs> yes. Shit hits the fan. Because it always does. <laughs> Yes. And, yeah, I don't know, I just find it weird that, like, and, like, wouldn't the professors also know? Oh, I don't know. But I suppose we'll see how it goes. I suppose people, in a situation like that, you'd want to follow along in order not to be killed. Yes. But I just think, again, still, it's too late in the game. For this world ending type of thing. Yeah, for these things to be happening. Now that I think about it, since, like, the whole of the, like, I guess America of in this world is compromised, 
I feel like they are gonna have to travel to Europe in order to rally some an army in order to restore the world to its former glory. That's my that's my theory. Um. Well, where yeah, where do you think this is going? What do you think? Yeah, I think as I just said, like I don't know. It's gonna be. It sounds like a really OP situation. I feel like them emerging from the tunnels is just gonna attract attention. It's gonna be hard mm. in order. No, but they can be invisible with the mist and stuff as well now. Yes. So anyway, ooh, now that I say that, it's it's gonna be tricky. It's gonna be a bit of a, a lot of stealth happening. Perhaps the next few books are gonna be a lot more tense and suspenseful. I hope so. I hope the red fledglings end up kind of like changing like Stevie Ray so yeah. they're a bit more useful. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it'd be very interesting to see how they solve this. Is Grandma gonna live? Is she gonna survive? Are the nuns going to play a part in all of this? Or? Yeah, are they gonna pray away Kelowna? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to see like if they even go back to the House of Night in order to try and, you know, cause some chaos. Yeah, what's gonna happen to Nefra? Like all these things. Yeah, no, like yeah, it's very interesting little little streams of plot and yeah, strings of not knowing where it's gonna go. I'm very much looking forward to reading the next two books. Yes. So See. Am I. But yeah, I guess that's it from us. Yeah, thanks for listening as always. Yeah, tune in next time. Next week we will be reading Not the Witch You Wed by I forget the author's name. April Asher or something? Yeah. Asher. Yeah, April Asher, yeah. Yeah, so that's a little, like, a once, like, a, just a standalone, like, uh, supernatural, supernatural romance. Yeah. Yeah. It's very good. Continue joining us on this House of Night journey. It's find us at Letterbox Book Club. If you find us one place, you'll find us all the places. Yeah, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, uh, SoundCloud. Uh, hopefully we'll be on iTunes properly by the time this is out. And we're also on Google Podcasts. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.